I think uh, Amazon Prime, you can get BritBox for like three bucks a month. Really? Yeah. So what's the, what's the last subject you want to do? Okay, so we need uh, two more episodes. Oh, that's going to be tough. Let's do the mental health. Okay, so I guess we're going to start on me since I'm going to be open. Uh, how does this? Depression and anxiety. Self-doubt and self-loathing. Feeling sorry for ourselves. How as a Christian should we deal with these things? All this and more on today's edition of the Two Williams Podcast. Hello and welcome back to another edition of the Two Williams Podcast. I'm William Henley. I'm William Quinn. Mr. Hanley, how are you doing today? Better than I have been. Mm. Um, this is not an easy topic today. This is a deep topic. This is a dark topic. Man, um, for the past few months, well, let's go back a bit further. So uh, I'm in seminary right now, mm. and uh, I'm definitely going through burnout. And just seems to be so much. I work 40 hours a week. I volunteer i'm in seminary working on my masters and here's the thing is is i'm just sitting here watching those student loans add up yeah and um i am just sitting here uh in a place where i'm i am pretty sure that if i break into the ministry i'm probably going to be like making less money than i am right now in it it's it's a scary concept and yeah. it's it can be frustrating because it's like we're supposed to be counseling people who go through this. Uh, yeah. We're supposed to be walking people uh, through it. And um, it's almost like we have to sit here as people in the ministry mm -hmm. and have to sit here and put on this fake facade and sit here and say, oh, everything's going great because I've got Jesus. And... Um, uh, Jesus is the answer to all of our problems and stuff like that. And, um, man, I got news to you. We go through stuff just like anyone else. We're human beings. I mean, it's not like we're reincarnated gods or anything. We're just human beings. We have struggles. We have life challenges. We have all sorts of things that are going on in all walks of life. School, finances, life in general. Yeah. So... We're going to talk about the day, but first off, uh, we need to talk about our sponsor today, and let's talk about um, our new sponsor. And for those of you guys watching on YouTube, uh, we don't have a sponsor yet, so we have no ads for you guys. So, we're back. Well, first of all, I just want to talk about some stuff that I just find just completely um, not useful, and... Uh, you actually sent me this link, and it's um, from Crosswalk, and this is supposed to be uh, kind of like, almost like a devotional, and it's uh, 10 Promises God Has for the Overwhelmed and Anxious Soul, and let me blow that up a bit for, um, and so I'm just going to go through these really quick. Uh, uh, number one, he promises rest for our shows. Come to me, all who are weary. Uh Go to uh, the um, next slide. He promises to guard our hearts and our minds. Do not be anxious about everything, but in every situation, by prayer protection, with thanksgiving, present your request to God and a peace which transcends all understanding, blah, 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 blah. Slide three. He promises security and communion with him, for God is not a God of disorder, but of peace. Uh, number four, he promises his perfect peace. Uh, uh, he, you see where I'm going with this? Um, it's like, thanks, but no thanks. It's like, this, this really is not helpful if you're sitting here going through a tough time. Mm -hmm. And um, I, I'm just going to tell you, man, over the uh, past few, few months, it's like, and especially just just a few weeks ago, I, I had to sit here and fill out my financial aid from the for the new year. 
if you guys haven't done this for a while, before you can apply for financial aid, you have to go through this loan counseling. Right. And one of the things they make you do is figure out what your debt is right now. They show you how much debt you already have out. They show you what your monthly payments are going to be before you even take on your next your student loans. Mm -hmm. Man, it is frightening. My student loan just passed six figures. Um, in fact, I'm about to hit the limit of what I can borrow, probably about the time I graduate. And mm -hmm. I'm, I was hoping to go on and get my doctorate. It's, let me tell you, th this is, it's, it's frightening. And then on top of this, it's just like there's so much pressure on you but it's like even more so, it's like there's almost this like doubt in your mind because it's like, yes, I trust God. Yeah, I trust him. Oh, gosh, I hope God's going to come through for me. And yeah. um, it's and I'm, I'm going to give you um, an example. Uh, God's. Asked me to, you know, go out on a limb, you know, do some sacrificial giving and stuff like that. And I'm like, I'm not sure if I can do that. And God's like, oh, I'll take care of you. I'll take care of you. And so, you know, then a few months go by and I'm like, okay, I'm really struggling here. Uh, uh, you know, and it's like, I trusted you at the time. When are you going to come through with this? And he said, I did ask you to make a sacrifice. It's like, um, it's like, it's not a sacrifice if it's going to be easy. And he's like, I am taking care of you. You're paying your bills. You have a roof over your head. You have food. I'm taking care of you. You know, I, I've heard people come out and just flat say that it's uh, horrible to, uh, you know, you should not go into debt or stuff like that. I, I, I got a mortgage. Um, I got got car payments. Um, yeah. I got student loans. It's, it's like, let's be realistic. Uh, what am I supposed to do? Am I supposed to sit here and live in an apartment and pay rent until I can save up money to get buy a house yeah. um, or a, a car or something? It's like, okay, let's, it's just the, the whole, uh, I'll tell you something else that's been bothering me. And mm. I, I'm sorry, I do want you to interact. I'm, I feel like uh, th yeah. this is a topic that's been on me for a while though but um i think i think we're you're not the only one in the same boat on this i mean i'm in the same boat you are as far as student loans goes. Mm -hmm. um i just my thing is this i just have to trust him you know with my prayers and with my finances you know that he's going to prevail if it means maybe calling the the place people that do student loans to help you maybe reduce your payments maybe mm -hmm. i've done that many times before and they've come through flying colors on that so i think God can also find a way out. I remember the Bible verse that says, if we can't, if we're unable to bear, he'll provide a way out mm -hmm. for that. So, and I believe, you know, even through stress, financially, or any other type of stress, God, God can pull you through even that measure, like providing mm -hmm. a way out. Maybe not permanent, but maybe temporarily, so you can maybe get on track, and then later on down the line, be able to handle that situation. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm sorry, there's going to be an edit. Take your time, man. You're good. Take a deep breath. You're good, man. Hey, Editor Will here. It may seem strange that I am leaving in this segment of me struggling with uh, lines and talking about the subject. This is a subject that affects many, many people. Student loans are frightening. And it affects us in such horrible ways. And I felt it important to leave at least part, this is shortened, but at least part of me having to sit here and get my thoughts together so that I could finish the show. And I'll tell you uh, just something else that's kind of, you know, just been hitting at me is trying to go into ministry and stuff. It's like I look at people that I've ministered to over the years mm -hmm. and so many of them, um, you know, that have sit here and profess faith and who seem to be on fire and stuff and then it's like a few months later a few years they later they drifted and, away yeah it's like they just drift away and yeah. um it's like they're like it just seems as if they were no different than they were before and mm -hmm. um i've had some people even start getting some like 
weird beliefs on God yeah. and so, some even turn away from him. And it it's like frustrating because it's like you're pouring in so much of yourself into people and then you just it's like have 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 I made a difference? Um mm -hmm. It's like, in the end, it's like, I have to sit here and trust that, okay, well, the person got their fire insurance, at least, yeah. but it's like, um, it, it, it's, it's frustrating when you sit here and pour and pour and pour and you're not seeing the fruits. My thing with that is, I think it's easier, instead of just one person trying to pour their life into it, he needs a group of people. Oh, I'll agree with that. One person's not going to cut it. I mean, you can't be there with them 24 hours a day right. to grow and nurture them. They got to have a good support group of fellow believers, especially definitely somebody with more ministerial experience mm. and more means of accountability. Mm -hmm. You know, let's just say stroke, you know, mm. spiritual stroke. You know, he's got to get grounded. In a, in a, first, he got to get grounded in a good church. He's got to get grounded in a good accountability group or a Bible study group. And then, you know, maybe someone with the means can just, it doesn't have to be like every day, but just, you know, every other day, just keep up with them to see how they're doing spiritually and, and accountability. So I think the stress of that on one person is unbearable. Mm -hmm. So getting a group together, you know, especially in a church that has maybe a group for new believers, especially, mm -hmm. you know, that stress can be easily manifested Mm -hmm. alleviated if it's done structurally and spiritually sound mm -hmm. well, that's definitely good advice um and i think uh, and try to start pulling this together instead of just uh talking about all of this stuff going on one of the things i've come to notice is that um it really helps when you sit here and realize you're not alone in this. Right. Um, and a brief story. Um, so my fiance passed away in 2008. Um, I did not know you were engaged. I was. Okay. So, I, you didn't tell me this story. I'm... Okay. So, uh, okay. So this, is, story I mean, this is the first time I knew this okay. during this taping. So, I'm interested. Go ahead. <laughs> okay. So, yeah. So, story time. Okay. So, yeah. I'd known this girl since she was born. And she had been sick since she was about seven. She uh, mm -hmm. got kidney dialysis and stuff mm -hmm. when she was 15. Yes, 15. She uh, had a, a transplant. Mm -hmm. I remember she was just like really, really um, upset. So I'm like, mm -hmm. well, hey, let's just go uh, take your mind off of it and stuff. And um, I took her to go see the first Harry Potter movie. Mm -hmm. Didn't really think much about it when I said, hey, let's go do this. But um, uh, we realized that we enjoyed spending time together. The down the bad thing about it is neither one of our parents approved of the relationship. Mm -hmm. And it was because of her health. She, she was always in and out of the hospital. So uh, when she was 21, uh, we were taught, and we kept trying to break it off. Uh, mm -hmm. We would break it off for a while, get back mm -hmm. together. One day we're sitting here talking, and she's like, you know what? I've come to realize that her parents are never going to accept this. Let's elope. And right then and there, she proposed to me. Yeah, she is like she proposed to me. It's like a, it's like crazy story, um, and so I'm like, "Are you sure you want to do this?" And uh, she's like, um, "Yeah, yeah." She's like, "I got a feeling that yeah, it's gonna really make some people mad at first, but she said they're gonna get used to it." And she said, "I think that's the only way they're gonna accept it." So uh, she said, uh, I got a few loose ends to uh, tie up uh, before we do this. I will contact you here in a couple of weeks and we can like run off to Vegas or something and, you know, just go get married. I think that's where everybody goes as far as the eloping goes. Everybody goes to Vegas. Right. And that was the last time I talked with her. So as I mentioned, she'd been in and out of the hospital a lot. She got an infection. Mm -hmm. Now, 
Because she was on immune system uh, suppressants, they went ahead and took her into the hospital for monitoring. They uh, messed up the diagnosis. Hmm. Then the doctor insisted on giving her um, a feeding tube Hmm. while she was conscious. Um, She resisted, and because of the struggle, he ended up ripping open her intestines. Hmm. That's what... That's what... I didn't even know she was in the hospital. Uh, The next thing I hear was her uncle calling me to tell me when the funeral was. And I'm like, who's funeral? Who died? So yeah, I was engaged for all of three weeks. (laughs) That's technically an engagement. Did did your parents know at all? No, not at that time. Uh, But you eventually did tell them. Yeah. Um, and, uh, pretty much, uh, both sides of the family pretty much accepted the fact that we were engaged. Um, I actually found out that the day before she died, her and her mom were in the hospital talking and, um, uh, finally her parents came to the realization that, that she she loved me, I loved her, uh, and uh, they they finally backed down and said we approve of this relationship. The day before she passed away, wow. everyone accepted the fact that we were um, engaged. Um, and so yeah, three weeks. Um, and uh, the next time, um, I, and I hadn't even seen her in like a year before then. You know, we we'd been talking and stuff because you know we'd been trying to break it off. And you didn't know she was sick. No, uh, next time I saw her was at, uh, at her uh, funeral. And so that was tough yeah. to deal with. That stress alone, that's, uh, you know, someone you loved and someone you wanted to marry, next minute was gone. A lifelong friend. I've known her since she was born. You know, uh, you never met my friend Clay. Uh, we were friends for like 17 years. And this is my first time talking about this on the podcast, but um, uh, basically about three years ago, I was uh, volunteering at the men's conference at the men's summit gateway. I didn't know, you know, he was in the hospital um, for kidney problems. And right. then one minute and then one Sunday afternoon, I get a text from his mom saying he's gone. One minute he's here. Next minute he's gone. Right, right. So that's it's I'll say this. As of today, it's it's I've learned to deal with it, but it's still hurt. There's still good. I think there's always going to be some hurt there right. from, from not knowing he was gone. Well, and you know the crazy thing is, is people are okay with giving you three months, six months to mourn, right? And then they expect you to just kind of snap back. It was nine months before I could even process the concept that she was gone. Yeah. Um, it was, uh, she passed away in, uh, on February 29th, um, uh, 2008. Mm-hmm. It wasn't until Thanksgiving that year when I'm sitting here having Thanksgiving with her family that, um, it, uh, that it hit me. This is nine months later. People expect you to be over it by then over it um and you know we're in a country where you know we sit here and um prize happiness and um Mm -hmm. um if you're not happy there's something wrong with you or something like that so yeah i just start going through the grieving process nine months later people start beating me up about it and then it's almost like there is this just circular pattern and it wasn't until nine years later that I finally went to a, a, a grief uh, class about it. The uh, guy teaching the class, the first thing he did is he stood up and said, it has been 23 years since my wife and daughter passed, uh, passed away in a car crash. And he said, there's not a day that I don't think about them. And I'm like, that's okay. That's all I needed to hear. That's literally all I needed to hear was that it is okay to, to uh, be sad. It is, and at that moment, right then when he said that, I was able to finally move on. 
That's powerful, man. I'll say this to piggyback on that. I think as far as even Christians, as far as grieving goes and anxiety, I think the good thing that we should have is space. Let us grieve. Let us privately talk to God about our griefs. And then rest them at the feet of the cross. You know, let take the burdens from all over our shoulders and let Jesus handle those burdens. That's what he died on the cross for. He's all powerful to know everybody's burdens and take them. He's already taken them already. Just let him go and let Jesus have them. Mm. He won't deceive you. He won't forsake you. He loves you so much that he wants to take those burdens from you. Whether it be a grief of a loss of a loved one, any type of stress or anxiety, let him have it. He makes his burden heavy so ours can be light. Our burdens are meant to be light. Not heavy. And that's a good way to end the show today, I think. Yeah, I think that's a great way. And I'm just going to sit here and remind people, just remember you're not alone. And reach out to someone. Um, get into a, um, a support group, stuff like that. Don't go through this alone because right. it's a secular pattern and yeah. it will eat you up. This is not coming from God. The enemy comes to... Uh, Kill, steal, and destroy. Thank you. Mm-hmm. And um, it's like that. That's that is not something from from God. Mm-hmm. But hear this: it is okay that you're going through this. Everyone does. So please, please, please hear me. You are not messed up. You, there is nothing wrong with you. You are human. And so I think that's where we're going to end it today. Yeah. Um, just want to remind our people on social media that um, you can reach out to either of us. Uh, I'm just on Instagram. Um, he's on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. Um, if we can get uh, moderators, uh, we'll turn the comments back on. Um, yes. And if you're on YouTube, if you'll click on subscribe, hit the thumbs up, uh, the bell icon to get notifications, and just tell your friends. And if you're going through anything and you want us to reach out to us, please do so. We'll help you. If we can't help you, we'll direct you to someone that can. Yes, yes. There's plenty of uh, good Christian places out there and stuff. So um, anyway, I think that wraps up another show. So um Until next time. Take care and God bless. And if you need help, please reach out. Thank you.